Hello, and today I want to introduce the notion of a strict liability offence within criminal law. So um, let's start with the general principle. So how it works in criminal law is we have a crime, and for that crime you have different elements. So the first element you have is the actus reus, which refers to um, the physical uh, act uh, of the crime, which may be, for example, appropriating a property, as it is with theft. Um, then you also have the mental element, the intention, the mens rea, which is um, an intention to, um, uh, for example, um, cause grievous bodily harm or kill. That's an example of the mental element. And what usually happens is you need to prove both of them in order to establish a conviction. Strict liability offences are different in the sense that they refer to crimes where one or more of the elements of the actus reus do not require a mens rea. And at first sight, you may think that this is a little bit bizarre and therefore it would be rare, but it's actually really important to get your head around strict liability offences because it's estimated that over half of the criminal offences um, uh, involve strict liability. And a lot of them involve, for example, drink, driving, speeding, things like this, where it's just unpractical to try and, um, you know, work out and prove that the defendant had an intention to speed at you know, over the speed limit, for example. And they're even more so important because they affect the way defences work. So in R. and Harper, 1997, this was a case where a guy was, um, guy was speeding and essentially he tried to claim um, the defence of insanity, but it said you cannot use the defence of in insanity, that's what the court said, because insanity is only valid to offences which have um, a mens rea. This was strict liability offence. We don't care that you're insane, we just care that the act was committed. So you can see it's very easy for the prosecution to prove such an offence. Now, the starting point uh, usually for courts is if the law, the statutes don't state anything about a mens rea, they will try and presume a mens rea because that's the normal way about going about criminal business. Um, so I've written here, where an act creates a criminal offence but does not mention mens rea, the presumption of mens rea takes precedence. And we can see this in two cases. One is in B and DPP 2000, and one is more recent in R and K 2002. If we just look at the recent one um, really quickly, in R and K involved a 26-year-old man who was claimed to have um, an indecent assault on a 14-year-old girl. He said she told me that she consented and was um, 16 years of age. And the court said, well, in this case, we will presume mens rea because it's a true criminal offence. And so for the prosecution to make um, the defendant liable here, they have to prove he had the intention of indecently assaulting a 14-year-old girl. That was the issue here. It's very similar with B and DPP. Um, so as a result of all of this, this means that um, an offence of strict liability only becomes applicable where it is clear that Parliament has made it quite clear and or a necessary inference can be taken that Parliament wanted this offence to be a strict liability. So how, when do you know what are the factors? How do we rebut this presumption of mens rea? Well, in Gammon, Hong Kong Limited and Attorney General of Hong Kong 1985, which was a case involving um, building regulations, um, the Privy Council held that it must be taken into account whether such event, uh, offences can be uh, prevented using a strict liability uh, mechanism and not only that it's really important is because they have in this case said that the presumption of mens rea can be displaced by clear and necessary presumption and they give examples of what do we mean by clear and necessary um, intention so the first one is um, the wording of the statute if the wording of the statute is explicit in that this is an offense of strict liability then it is one of strict liability you can rebut the presumption and this is uh, this can be seen in R and Matudi 2003 where in the product of animal uh, origin 
Import and Export Regulations 1996, it was made clear that the offence of importing animal products was an, uh, was one of absolute liability. That is what it says in the statute. So obviously we can rebut the presumption there and use strict liability. Another place where we can use it is where we're looking at the distinction between regulatory crimes and true crimes. So you're looking at the purpose and the nature of the offence. So in street and parsley, this involved a teacher who gave her property to some students, but the students were smoking cannabis. <coughs> she didn't realise, um, sorry, she didn't know, she wasn't aware that the students were smoking cannabis. And the statute um, did not state whether um, it was whether you needed uh, mens rea for the offence of managing a premises which was being used for drug use. It didn't say that. So the courts had to decide whether mens rea pr uh, presumption was rebutted or still in use here. And they said that it was still in use in common law. And this is a true crime. We're looking at drug possession. So we required the mens rea element. It was serious. It's not just a regulatory thing. That's not the purpose of the act. Um, the other one is where you look at profit making activities which create a hazard for the public so looking at the social concern that relates to you know public policy elements which was explicitly mentioned by Lord Stein in R&K that this plays a key role in deducing whether the presumption has been rebutted. Another place is the seriousness of the offence so some some say that um, the less serious the offence, the more you need it to be strict liability. Um, and they give an example of a case called Alpha Cell and Woodward. And in this, a factory owner was convicted of uh, polluting an ocean. And they're saying as a crime, as a true crime, this is quite serious. But you need to have it a strict liability. You need to make this easier to prove because it's public policy considerations. Again, um, you know, the other people, however, suggest the more serious, the more need for strict liability. Depends on the spectrum and how the barristers argue and the judges own preferences what will um, be the result of that so th that's how they deduce whether the presumption has been rebutted and if it has then we use the normal strict liability mechanisms now because strict liability is so so important as I said over half the cases in the criminal system are strict liability in my next video I'm going to briefly go over arguments um, to uh, for and against um, strict liability crimes Thank you for watching. Please visit my website.